think we'll get started. Just got a couple minutes behind, but uh, we had some people coming in late, so we uh, appreciate the attendance today. So welcome everyone to the 2023 Lola annual meeting. Um, just to note for everyone, the, this session is being recorded. So just so everyone's aware, uh, it's not streamed live, just being recorded. It'll probably be played later at some point. Um, so I just wanted to open, my name's Chris Farrar. I'm the current president of Lola. Uh, at least for the next you know, 30, 45 minutes here until we do the election of officers you see on the agenda towards the end. Um, so again, thanks for coming. Uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple things that uh, is going on with Lola right now and then we'll go on to the rest of the agenda. Um, so membership's currently around 90 uh, for the year uh, out of roughly 900, right? So hopefully everyone has seen a, a decent push on social media, uh, emails and other things to try and get people more involved, uh, get your voices heard and really boost our membership so we can advocate for the lake a little bit better. Um, so thank you for all of you who have joined. If you haven't, there's membership forms out there. Um, and I would ask you all to encourage your friends, neighbors, any lake residents to join Lola. Just to hit a couple of Lola activities, we're gonna hit more detail on through the agenda, but just a couple of things we do. Hopefully everyone has seen the no wake buoys. They've all been refurbished, a couple new ones, and they were all deployed. And I think we've already had to move a couple of them. But, uh, you know, that, that happens every year. They either move on their own or people move them or they get hit with boats. You know, stuff happens. We, we try and maintain them the best we can. Um, a couple other things that Lola's involved in, the lighted boat parade. Uh, hopefully everyone's excited about that. We had an amazing turnout last year, uh, hoping to build on that momentum this year. And then uh, the safety patrols for the dragon boat races. Uh, Lola has, in the past, always... Uh, taking the lead on that, and I believe we have a sign-up sheet already uh, at the table. So if people are interested in volunteering a couple hours of your time for the safety patrols for the Dragon Ball races, uh, please feel free to sign up. Uh, the big topic that we're concerned about right now is, is water safety on the lake. Um, so this particular year already, last year in particular, and the year before that have been particularly bad. Um, we think a lot of it's due to overcrowding. There's more boats on the lake than we've ever had. I think there's a couple reasons for that. We, we suspect there's people who are renting dock space in their per, per, personal houses um, or just letting people you know, keep their boat there permanently at, at no cost either way. Uh, we've talked with the DNR and Eagle and technically there's some legalities involved in that. I think Jerry might hit on a couple of those and I believe there's a, a handout that, that goes through some of that. Um, so really from a Lola perspective, we're not an enforcement agency. We're just spreading awareness. Um, you know, these are things that we've heard from the membership as we did the SAD number two, the, fair, the various surveys we've done. This is something that people are concerned about. Uh, along with overcrowding, we've seen a lot of people not following general lake safety rules, right? So there's some particular rules that are uh, specific to Lake Orion uh, that again, I think we have a, a sheet out there that uh, lists those. Um, but in general, you know, people not going the right direction on the lake uh, and cutting people off that are going in the right direction on the lake. And then people going too fast and too close to shore and just generally putting um, people in, a, in an unsafe situation. Luckily, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had any severe incidents and we really would, would hope to avoid that. So that's a, just a particular concern of ours over the last couple of years that we've witnessed and heard from the membership. And then to add on, to maybe end my little opening remarks on a positive note, um, Lola was in a position again this year to donate uh, some money to the Fireworks Association. So I would encourage everyone that's uh, certainly that lives on the lake and partakes in that great uh, event to, to donate to the Fireworks Association as well. And uh, I'm gonna told everyone I keep my comments brief and I think we'll move on to the, uh, the regular reports that we do as part of Lola. So I'll turn it over to Richard Benoit for the treasurer's report. Thanks, Chris, and as usual, we save the best part of the meeting for first, the treasurer's report, and we'll be brief. Um, the fiscal year for the Lake Association is April 1st of 22 through March 31st of 23. That's the reporting period that we're covering. We started with a beginning balance of $5,520.93. Um, we had income during this fiscal period 
of $1,153.78. That income was generated from membership and donations. We had no fundraisers this year, um, which I think we're going to need to do in the future, and we've done before very successfully. Uh, expenses. We've had uh, total expenses of $5,197.85. Um, and we break our expenses down in several categories. We have um, insurance. Um, we have um, LOLA programs, uh, which consists of buoys, water quality, and so on. We have our membership costs, subscriptions, fees, postage, basically general and administrative costs for the organization, and fundraisers. Uh, we do contribute to those. Um, as was mentioned with the lighted boat parade and so on. Our biggest expense this year uh, was buoys, repairing and, uh, and replacing the buoys. And we probably spent in the neighborhood of seventeen dollars or $1,800 on our buoys alone, uh, oftentimes from wear and tear. Um, and we'll cover that in a little while. Um, that leaves us a balance uh, ending as of March 31st, uh, 2023, of $3,079.86. Good news is uh, we're getting a lot of memberships coming in and PayPal and uh, so on, and uh, donations and memberships are very important to this organization. Thank you. Use our, excuse me, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Jerry Richards, and uh, I'm the, currently the membership chairperson, and so I think I'm supposed to talk about membership first, so that's what I'll do. Um, Chris mentioned that we had about 90. Well, we've had a couple of bumps today, and it's actually up to 97 as of just before I came to the meeting. So some of our emails are working. Uh, we've done uh, notifications in the chat room. Uh, we've done it on our website. Uh, we've done it with the emails that I mentioned. The, bot down the bottom line for emails is out of the 800 plus, close to 900 residents on the lake, we only have about 180 emails for those folks. So it, the first cut is to try and entice people with our email send outs. I've done three of them so far. And uh, it's, it has worked, but the next cut will be either door to door, knocking on a door and introducing ourselves and let people know who we are, what we do. And, and the other option is to do a bulk mailing to those that haven't responded as of date to membership renewal or haven't caught the fact that we, we are taking new members. Membership is open all the time. Anybody can join all the time. Uh, Richard mentioned that we've had some donations, and some have been very nice donations to us, and we really do appreciate it. Those funds are spent very well. It's uh, monitored and carefully spent because we, we don't get a lot of uh, money extra. The... Um, the email, like I said, has been doing pretty good, but now it becomes, for those of us that are already members, we could, do, we could do a job to help our membership as well. We can advocate for the Lake Association. You can tell people why you're a member of the association. We have the uh, membership forms online, so you can download it at our website, and it's Lola Info. At, lolainfo.org and it's real easy the website pops right up and you'll find all kinds of information on there about things that we've done including all the lighter boat parades and and all of that so there's actually video in there and uh, there's also a very interesting video of us taking the buoys out of the lake the no wake buoys so um, 
Any questions for me on membership? Is there anybody in here right now that is not a member of the Lake Association? Okay. <laughs> I, I only saw a couple of hands and, and uh, appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that you, everybody's supporting us. That's a good sign out of this crowd. So with that, I, I think I can move on to water safety. There's, there's uh, parcels, Sidwells. Sidwells is a property identification number. In some key cases, people own multiple properties. So that, that number is kind of skewed when you think about how many homes are actually there. And then some of those homes, of course, are rentals, and sometimes rental people aren't here to belong to a lake association or even know that we have one. Did that answer your question? All right, thank you. Uh, water safety. Uh, Chris already mentioned that we refurbished the no wake buoys this year, and that is no small task. Uh, the three that we bought new, that's pretty easy. We mount a light up on them, and then we go out and launch them. The ones that we have to refurbish, there's literally hours of scraping to get the old buoys, the old decal off the buoys and get them ready to be resurfaced with new decals. Um, so that was all done. They all got launched. Now there's a few that kind of sit low in the water and uh, those will probably be an easier target for the boats that regularly hit them. So, cause they're not standing as tall and proud as, as the rest of them. But we really, really uh, would like people to be cautious. And if you see a boat during the day that's getting ready to hit a boat, just say, hey, hey, you're going to hit the buoy kind of thing. Because uh, the buoys, I have an example out there on the table of a buoy that got hit by the prop of an airplane. I'm not kidding you. It got hit by a prop of an airplane. And uh, it, was a, it was a float plane, obviously. And, uh, but it did significant damage to the buoy to the point we had to retire it. So now those other buoys that are low in the water, hopefully we'll raise enough funds to replace a few more next year. So again, it, it's very costly. The buoys are about $200 a piece. They ship from Wisconsin and it costs almost as much in shipping as it does for the cost of the buoy. And there's nobody around here that makes the, the ones that, that we like and they have proven so successful for us. Um, any other questions on water safety? Well, the, the whole point is, is there, okay, there's a monetary fine, but the thing that people aren't thinking about is the fact that your homeowner's insurance does not cover you to rent your dock space. If you rent your dock space and if somebody gets hurt and if they decide to sue you, your insurance company is gonna say, so sad, you're on your own. And a lot of people don't understand that and, and I encourage people to check with their insurance company, but you're literally running a business out of your home and you don't, you're not insured for that. Does that answer your question? Well, again, we're working on that. We're working with the village to review some of their ordinances to put a little more um, de definition into them so that they can be used more effectively, at least within the village waters. Uh, on the township side of things, we don't have specific ordinances that address that. So we're, we're trying to do this in a two-step process. Um, we're not getting a lot of encouragement uh, from the municipalities because it just means something else on the books for them. And, you know, I mean, we can talk about all the rules that we're not enforcing on the water right now. And that, again, is limited resources. And particularly with the DNR, they have two, two people on the conservation side that actually cover our lake on and off. You're, you're absolutely right, and nobody's going to argue with you on that point. But we're trying, and that's all we can do is try. And part of that is educating people, and we've done that. We sent out a, a, 
on our uh, Facebook page. We put out the letter that there's copies of out there on the table explaining all of this to them in hopes that oh, the light will turn on and say, hey, I, don't, I really don't need to do this. So, but it's a big issue. Overcrowding is a big issue. Overcrowding is, is from several different points, but rental of, of individuals' private dock space is the major contributor. So any other questions for me? Yes, sir. We have done that in the past. We've had handouts over there. We didn't find we didn't find a measurable change in behaviors. Right. Did you have to read that before they, you could sign the lease for whatever period you were there? Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, we have to remember that you don't need to have a license to buy a boat. All you got to be able to do is sign the line and get the bank to approve it. So, um, and that's part of the problem. Boating is a recreational sport and it's always been treated as such and guarded as such. So they don't want to have to license people because that would detract from the ability to sell boats. So we've been told that in some of the statewide conventions that we participated in in the past. Did I answer your question? Sure. Yeah. Can we give the microphone to the speakers? Sure. Oh, is this? Now maybe it's your question. I'm going to make it under the video. I'm not sure it's turned on. Check it. Okay, we're going to, anybody wants to ask a question from here? There's a question in the back of the room. I'm sorry about my voice. It's uh, yeah, hi, Must Jerry. be something. <laughs> Hello, test. Okay, there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, Jerry. Now I'm. It's, I'm talking years ago uh, when we first moved onto the lake, and I was one of those people that I had my pontoon boat, my ski boat, my jet ski, the fishing boat. Well, uh, the first year all that stuff was on my dock. Uh, I had the DNR tapping at my door, and they were verifying the registration on all quote, the vessels that were, were attached to it. Now, that seems like something that the DNR should be doing now and moving forward. It, it's, it's something that, that I thought, you know, and I wasn't the only one. And, and if I got caught, um, I guess technically you're only allowed to have, I don't know if it's changed, but three vessels on a dock. And if it's anything more than that, uh, the DNR can come up and issue a citation. And then the citation meant from there is I had to get my registration, board it over to the DNR, mail it into them, and then they waived the ticket on it once they received that. That they, they knew I, you know, all those toys belonged to me. And that's where right now the DNR is strapped for resources to be able to do that. I get that, but the DNR hasn't changed in 30 years. There's not more, you don't see any more DNR. Uh, on our lake, you get the maybe once a month a visit that they drive by, and and that's about it. I mean, it's been like that for years. Yeah, you're right. You're it, right. But I mean, while they're out there, they can turn around and issue revenue from their end by issuing tickets to the households that have three different uh, nameplates or registrations for different people on their dock. That's that's wrong. That that. That person is in violation right there. Well, um, when we get when we start to wrap our arms around this more firmly, maybe we can call upon you to share some of this with us again, because we we want to fix it. Believe me, we do want to fix it. So. Yeah.
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, folks, uh, we appreciate your questions, but we're trying to stick to the agenda, and we know how hard that is. So um, I think we're going to move on to. Are you are you talking specifically about doc rentals? Yes. Okay, so so we we met with the village and we met with Chris Barnett from the township and and brought that issue forward. Okay, um, we are going to continue that at least with the village for now, um, and and we're working on that. But I got to tell you, we we were not we were not received with open arms. Okay, and so I think part of what, what we've been getting at it with membership is as a, as a lake association, we have a voice and, and the, 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 the more numbers, the higher our membership is, the louder our voice is. So I think that what we gotta do is we gotta get enough of us engaged so that we, so that we have that voice. Well, you have to re you, you have to understand we are not an enforcement agency. We can educate and we can go and talk to the village, the township, et cetera. And as George just indicated, we've done that once already. Now, as George said, we didn't get a reception with open arms, but we're not giving up. So I, I hope you encourage those people to reconsider because... I guess what I'm hearing is that we need to better do a better job of communicating to people that we really are involved on this topic and here's what we're doing. So that, that's my takeaway from tonight. So. No. Well, once again,
that's the very first time I've heard that anybody calling in a complaint has to get an MC number. If, if we're successful in the village with the ordinance chain, the ordinance officer will go and get the MC number. But I think we have to cut this off. It, good discussion, we really appreciate it, but we've, we've got a lot more on the agenda. And if we have time, we'll loop back around on this towards the end. Fair enough? So right. if, I, if I can just say one more thing, here's what we have done, okay? We have, we, Lola, have, have rewritten the ordinances for the village and presented those to the village planner. So we, we have rewritten the ordinances around um, dockage and, and what constitutes a marina. We've presented that to the village planner. We've gotten a response back that of the process we need to go through, there are a couple of fees we're going to have to pay. There's a, a processing fee of 595, and then I think the to get it through the planning commission sta stage, I think was another 900 bucks. 900. So we have to, so we have to do some soul searching <clears throat> as to whether we can afford that. But we have taken some very active steps. Go back to what you're saying. Some people would consider that an invasion of privacy to see you in there trying to get MC numbers. I see one hand in the back. Okay, I'll be really quick. I understand that the, the uh, docks are open now at the restaurant, and there's 12, supposedly 12 people that are working there. Yeah. And they have to be at the restaurant. That, that issue is just in as a, an emergence right now. This is the very first finger dock we've seen on our lake. And we were surprised and appalled that the DNR approved it, knowing what we're trying to do with the lake overcrowding issue. So in this case, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, and they approved it for 24 boats. And we just got to wait and see. So, But rafting is not illegal. So. So, Bill, let me understand. If you saw that situation, you would en engage and do something about it. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, folks, we really need to cut this off and move on. Like I said, when we get to the end, we can loop around or we can stand out in the parking lot and talk about this. So thank you very much. Enough doom and gloom. We're going to talk about some fun stuff. Now, be brief, unlike Jerry, taking all my time. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And Rich is wrong. They say the best for last. Okay, because I got show and tell stuff. Very briefly. Okay, what is my name? My name is Michael Kelly. And what do I do? I represent water quality, and people are like, what does that mean? 
Water quality. I work with the state of Michigan. We take water samples. We take water samples. We take readings. Um, that's provided to us and we submit them every year. We've been doing this, I think it's like four years straight now. COVID might have had an effect in the, in the one year. Um, but we take measurements throughout the year. Um, and it, I'm kind of the doctor of the lake. You can go in this fine website right here, MichiganCorps.net. And the great thing is you can look up any lake you want and get the health report. And especially for Lake Orion, people care about water quality. They want to know the health of your lake. You can go back and look 20 years if they were collecting and look at the trend analysis and see how your lake is doing. And I can tell you, our Lake Orion is one of the healthier lakes. It's not the healthiest, because we do have some runoff water effects and that sort of thing, but it's, it's one of the better ones, um, keeping it in a snapshot. But I encourage you all, it's a fine website. It talks all about training. It talks about volunteer opportunities, which right now I do all the water measurements um, with the tools of the trade. However, I'm always looking for volunteers. Uh, I can provide training. They can provide free training. Um, or if you just want to go out and see what we do. Um, there is a, a point to make that um, even goes back to what Richard's saying and, and you know, where do our funds and donations go? Water quality is not free. Um, we have to pay the state of Michigan to get the supplies. Without doing so, we're not, do we're not collecting water samples or doing anything at all. Um, so your fine contributions, your memberships, they, they contribute towards this, which I think is very important. That's why I don't have enough time to deep dive into the cool stuff, the data and all the stuff we do, but I encourage you to do so. It's a great site, it's got a lot of videos, it's got tons of training, um, and tons of newsletters, and just everything for inland lakes completely. Um, and, and it's really fortunate that we're able to do that here on Lake Orion. So I super encourage that. Um, again, I'll go real brief on what I actually do. Um, and if you want to hit me up after, if you want to volunteer, if you want a question, you want to tell me a joke, whatever it happens to be, I'm all ears. Like I said, I'm all for volunteers. If you want to partner, um, we're always looking to, to educate uh, for awareness and to spread the word. Um, but real quickly, let me see if this works. Does this work? It does work. Okay, real quick. So we take phosphorus samples, spring and summer. That's easy peasy. I have a, it, it's not easy in the spring. So I'm looking for the volunteer to put their arm a foot under in 32 degree water. But I, I've been doing it. Invasive species, if anybody's interested. Secchi disc. This guy. This guy is, I think, I believe a Japanese, uh, uh, Japanese PhD or something came up. His last name is Seki. You can look that up, too. Seki disc. This is how we measure water, cl water clarity. We use the disc. We drop it down. I just did this last night, and you can see down 14 feet. So you get some rainwater. Today, if I went out there right now, you'd probably see 8 feet. Because of the rain that gets everything moving, you get runoff. Right last night, we were at 14 feet, which is about average for this time of year. Um, we also do, well, we got the coffee can. What does that thing do? Well, sadly enough, it's not the original one. So if you have an anchor and you catch my original one on the bottom of the lake, let me know. I'd like it back. So this is the second one. Yeah. Um, what does this thing do? It enables us to capture water um, 20 to 50 feet underneath. So, which is a very unique, sky unique uh, setup with the physics. You drop it all the way down, you see your bubbles, you lift it slowly up, and voila, you have, you have a water sample from 50 feet down, which is really cool. So we have to freeze them, we have to prep them, we have to add magnesium. We have to do a lot of things that I'm not even showing you. But for awareness, when people say, hey, that guy was up there, you know, we actually do things, and we collect right off Bellevue Bridge. So if you see that guy and you're cursing me out because my pontoon is parked right outside Bellevue Bridge in the middle of everybody trying to get water samples, this should be easy on me. Um, so that's all I got today. I want to be brief because I know there's, I think there's going to be a lot of questions after the fact and I want to leave room for buffer. But again, my name is, what is it? Oh, Mike Keller. Mike Keller, come see me. You can, uh, if you have questions after the fact, email the website. Um, they'll get in touch with me and we'll make it us connect and I'll be happy to, to share the knowledge. Thank you so much.
That's a good looking group right there. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So first of all, um, thank you everyone for coming. Welcome to your new building. Who's, whose first time is it in the facility? It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? So thank you. We did not, we did not raise your taxes to do that, uh, build the building. We're, we're really uh, excited to, to host this meeting. Um, thank you for understanding uh, and letting me remote in. Just real brief, uh, a personal uh, note of personal maybe privilege. Um, I was called on Tuesday by my friend who's the mayor of Miami to come out for an announcement he's making at the Ronald Reagan Library. In an hour and 45 minutes, he's uh, gonna be announcing he's running for president. So I had I could not miss that. So I'm literally in California for I think eight or 10 hours uh, and I'll be back tomorrow. But thank you all for letting me zoom into you. Um, Super excited about what Lola's doing. And I just I just wanna, um, I've been listening and um, also working with the Lola board. I have for the 11 years that I've had the privilege of being the supervisor. Um, but I do wanna say, uh, I think this is the, and no offense to the, Lola, the long timers there, uh, but um, this is probably the most active that I've seen the Lola board uh, be in, in the 11 years I've, I've been the supervisor. So kudos to, to the board, uh, to Chris and George and Jerry and Michael, and, and uh, it's a great group. I, I will tell you that um, we do hear what you're saying. We are, we share the same concerns. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're dealing with three different jurisdictions and that's the township, the village, and then the DNR. And the DNR, as I've been listening, is, is one of the more challenging ones to work with. Now, Chris Knight, Office, Officer Knights, is phenomenal. He's great. I, I heard Greg mention him. Uh, we, many of us know him. His jurisdiction is literally, I think he has three counties. And just to put that into perspective, I think most of you probably know this, but we have 42 lakes in just our 36 square miles. So um, it's it's a challenge to, to get um, some of these changes made. And, and frankly, we're swimming upstream and we're gonna hear from our great state representative here in a few minutes, who's beaten down. I see her smiling right now, Donnie Steele, who uh, we're really blessed, we're lucky because the state house district covers many communities and the fact that she lives in our community, she lives on a lake in our community uh, is a great benefit to us. So we do have an ear in Lansing. Um, that said, these issues are challenging and um, we have to work together. And we did meet, the, the, the Lola board put a meeting together um, almost a month and a half ago, I would say, with the village and the township and the sheriff's office and the village police to talk about some of these issues, lake safety, keyholing, um, Airbnbs have come up. And these are all issues we're sensitive to. We all have to remember that, generally speaking, the waters of the state are under the jurisdiction of the DNR. Um, and frankly, their stated mission is to get more people on our lakes, literally. That's what they wanna do. They've actually recently uh, tried to purchase property around the public access in the last five years to actually expand that, that lot and allow more docks. So I know our residents would not be thrilled with that, um, but that's their mission. Their mission is they want more people to enjoy the great amenities of our Great Lakes state. So uh, that's the challenge we have. I would say this, we are positioned really well and better than most lakes around us. One, because I saw him in the back a minute ago, Bill Hughes. Um, if everybody doesn't know Bill, you should, or you're lucky because he hasn't safety checked you. Um, but uh, to have a, a person that lives on our lake, that's a resident that also is an employee of the sheriff's office that cares, um, is a rare scenario. Again, there's uh, so many lakes in the entire county that the sheriff's office polices, uh, and most of them are policed by jump boats. So they literally get a different officer or a different deputy, random weekends, sporadic, complaint-driven. So the fact that we have one person on a boat that's always on the lake, not always in the boat on the lake, but that can get there quickly is, is a real blessing. So we, in spite of the problems, and I agree with all of you, um, cause I see you all out on the lake in spite of the problems, we, we are pretty well positioned. Um, another update I want to just share on the, on the safety aspect, the township bought and launched, uh, two fire boats last year. We didn't really use, use those boats, um, last year, but one will be permanently docked on the lake. It's near the Greens Park, um, pu new public docks. If you haven't been there, it's a really good kept secret. I'm trying not to tell too many people, but, <laughs> um, the, there's a, it's next to the village police boat, uh, and you'll see that boat in action a lot more. You'll certainly see it on July 1st, uh, but they will be able to respond to emergencies on the lake. 
you're going to see it a lot more because we're going to start training our firefighters on lake rescue, on fighting fires, drafting water, uh, and things like that. So that's that's a great upgrade for us um, as well. And then um, just just to mention a couple other things, I just just thank the volunteers. I mean, um, special assessment districts are handled by my office. They're a pain in the butt. Um, and the largest one we have by probably five times is the Lake Orion Lake uh, Water Quality or Weed treat, Treatment, SAD. And I know that would not have happened without uh, many, several of the volunteers I see in the room right now. So um, that that's awesome. If you, if you recall back, it used to be voluntary and people would collect money and, and different people would treat and others wouldn't. And this forces everyone to. And we have certainly seen an improvement of the water quality and keeping the weeds at bay and protecting our property values. And just a quick note on property values too, and I'm not trying to get controversial or talk about the new developments coming in the village or other things, but we did a study recently to see how we're doing. And this is just kind of overall quality of life things, um, but certainly if you live on the lake, you've experienced this. But our values, not just on the lake, but in our community have tracked at between 12 and 15% at a higher trajectory over a five-year time frame, uh, higher than our neighbors. Rod, downtown Rochester, Oxford, the neighbors around us. So, so we're doing a good thing. People want to come here. Uh, as you can see, if you live on the lake, property values have really, really skyrocketed, and hopefully you're all benefiting from that. So um, we are still funding the, the police patrol on Lake Orion. That's been a subject of a lot of discussion in the past because it's the only lake in the township that we um, fund to the extent that we do for police protection uh, and patrols. But we, the township board continues to feel that that's a high priority. And, and uh, we will continue to do that as long as I'm around. Um, so uh, a note on the restaurant as well, those that's not overnight docking. I heard a little discussion about that. We've worked with the owners um, extensively throughout their development of their project. Uh, they will have two of those finger docks. They, the, the DNR approved them for that. So they'll actually have 24 slips. They will have um, do boat dock hands as well. They'll have dock hands on both those um, docks for people to, that are coming in that will get assistance docking. So again, we have no control of that, about that. I heard Bill speak, I think briefly about, you know, what he can do in his role. Um, but, but it, it's limited, uh, to the extent that, um, you know, we can protect people and make sure that people are acting safe and using the lake properly. One of the great ideas that we had with Lola this year was using our billboards. The township has two electronic billboards. We can uh, do free advertising. So we want to drive membership. I would be, it would be my dream to see, you know, 500 members of Lola, 900 really, but realistically it'd be great to get half the lake at least. Um, so we want to start doing some promotion of the activities that Lola does, the great work they do. Um, and then um, just awareness. We, we want to bring back the boater safety classes. Uh, and we've been in talks about doing that and trying to get, make sure people uh, at least learn how to use the lake. Cause I think you all will agree that has been the main safety concerns over the last few years as we've seen people using our lake more is there's just the uneducated boaters. Uh, so the good news is I think we've seen a little bit of curtailing since the rentals have gone away because um, uh, those seem to be a problem, uh, at least from our perspective and talking with Bill uh, and the village police. So um, with that, I would encourage everyone, thank, thank you, Greg Rogers, for, for taking the lead for the last few years on the fireworks fundraising. Um, we are not there yet, so I'm putting a plug in for that. If you have not donated yet, please give Greg a hundred bucks before you leave tonight and give Lola another hundred. You can afford it, no, or 20, we'll take 22, uh, but we're putting a big push on for that as well. And then kind of a, one more cool kind of fun fact and I'll answer any questions and then I got a bolt, but um, we had on May 26th, the, ambassador, the Polish ambassador visited Orion and randomly decided he wanted to see the lake. So I scrambled and took him for a boat ride, uh, which was a really, really cool thing to have a diplomat, a foreign diplomat. Um, and he was just blown away um, by the lake and the amenities and my terrible version of the history um, that Reva would probably be upset because I probably got half of it wrong. I made up most of it, but um, he was impressed. And then we have the, the ambassador to Qatar coming next week, uh, which is really cool. They're a great friend of America, the largest air base in the Middle East. And he's coming to visit. So uh, people, Lake Orion is on the map. So uh, cool things happening. Appreciate all of you because you are the ones that are taking time on your nights to come and, and make our community and our lake safer and better. Um, and I certainly uh, i am here to help any way I can. Uh, some of the issues you guys, we, we, we were kind of wormholing on, 
uh, with Jerry are, are real issues, and it's going to take a real collaborative effort from lake owners to the DNR to the, to the township, Oakland Sheriff's Office, and the village. And uh, the good news is uh, Lola assembled all those people last month. They did that. So, so I know, you know some folks are saying we got to get Lola out there more. I, I agree, but they are actually doing a ton of work behind the scenes that probably the majority of our residents on the lake don't know. So I can catch a couple questions if you have them, and then I'm going to sneak. No, I, I can see it from my house. Do you have a boat on the lake? I do. It's at my I do. It's at my uncle's house and has been for eleven years. I I, I donated hundred bucks to Lola this year, and I usually do. So, any other questions for Chris? Hi, Chris. Uh, just wondering if you could estimate the number of millions of dollars that we as homeowners around the lake have invested in our homes over the past few years. I, I can't and I can't estimate that. I mean, we could we could easily pull property tax rest, records from the SAD roll. It's nice because we have them all assembled now and we could see the total value of all the homes. I, I don't know what that is, but that's an interesting thought and be fun to see at some point. I don't know what that is, though. And if somebody wants that, we can certainly get that. I can tell you that GM's investing four billion dollars <laughs> in our entire the entire value of our of, of every commercial and residential property in our 36 square miles is just over four billion. So to put into perspective that the investment that GM's making, they're literally doubling the value of the township. Um, and we hope you know it's not going to be instant. And there were certainly um, incentives that were given by the state and the township to attract that investment. But we certainly will be seeing additional revenue. So there, there may be opportunities to provide additional policing, to provide additional things uh, that we haven't been able to do in the past. I'm not making any promises. And while I am the supervisor, I'm one of seven, seven votes. But, you know, that should be a win-win for our community. Not only are they bringing jobs and investment, but we should see the benefit of that investment as well. So hopefully you all like the new welcome signs that are at all our gateways. Uh, but we're really trying to do things to, to brand our community and make this a really uh, upscale uh, place that people are proud of. Proud of. Anything else for Chris? Hi, Chris. I'm, an, I'm a new to the area here, but I'm wondering about you were trying to finance things and help Lola. Is there a possibility we can get the township grant writers to help Lola and search for grants or other fundings being uh, the members here? We're not professional grant writers and you know how extensive it is. <laughs> kind of money. Right. I wonder if we get any kind of assistance in that matter for something that comes along. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, we have a grant writer on staff. It's one of the hats that the, our chief of staff, Sam Timko, uh, is our grant writer. So she wears several hats, but one of them is she is our in-house grant writer. And we, we do look. We, we are constantly scouring. I mean, we are um, in the state of the township address, we kind of showed a comparison slide of the grants that the township has received versus all of our neighbors, and we are by far and away above uh, where they are. There's, it's very niche, niche, like what what type of grants we might qualify for for the lake. Um, there aren't necessarily a lot. You you would think there might be a lot of grants, um, but there there really aren't. But we are we are constantly scouring and looking. If anyone knows of anything. If, if, if you know of grants that are out there, but we don't, but you know, obviously Lola doesn't have the capacity to write them. Uh, if, if someone finds them and points us in the right direction, we will absolutely take the lead and jump all over them. We have a great track record and we probably can get a letter of recommendation from our state rep to put in our grant application as well. Okay, uh, Chris, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us, um, even if it was remote. We appreciate that. We also appreciate uh, your meeting with us with the village a um, month or so ago, like you mentioned. We appreciate your support. Anything else for yeah, Chris? I'm, I'm, I'm always there. I'm, I'm trying to get back in the lake. I lived on the lake for three years, a few years ago. Uh, and like I said, I, um, I can see it. And I think we have deeded access on our street, but I, um, I'm not quite there yet. But if you guys stop driving the prices up so high, I might be able to afford to get back out there.
All right, thanks, sir. And by all means, now that you know where our office is, um, outside of tonight, um, we're there all the time. And if you have questions, uh, call, email. There's a stack of my cards on the wall on the right as you leave. Um, under the pictures, grab a card, send an email, um, or uh, flag me down on the link. I'm happy to chat anytime about any of these issues. And uh, we are so blessed. You guys know this, but um, people are so envious when they visit and see what we have. And uh, and I, I am fully invested in protecting that, um, like you all are. So thank you, and uh, we'll do this together. Thanks, everybody. And give Bill Hughes a big hug on the way out, too, because he really likes people hugging him. <laughs> or bourbon. He takes either. Thanks, Chris. See you guys. Thank you. Okay, up next is uh, Rob Cavanaugh. Um, and w one of the plugs I wanted to put in, so Chris is not a homeowner on the lake, but Chris is a member of Lola. So you don't have to be a, a resident, you don't have to have property on the lake to be a member of Lola. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I can vouch for that too. So um, good evening, everyone. My name is Rob Kevin. I'm representing uh, Dragon on the Lake, and I can, I'm, uh, don't live on the lake, but I have been uh, a Lola member for a number of years, and uh, as I frequently use the DNR launch and out there usually about every other weekend. So. Um, I just want to say th thank you very much, Lola, for the opportunity to come and give tell everybody about this year's uh, uh, Dragon on the Lake Festival. This is going to be our 13th year for this wonderful uh, event. It's Lake Orion's biggest festival, and I think it's definitely the best by the turnout and all the smiles that we see. Um, so it's going to be August 25th, 26th, and 27th. The festivities start on Friday night, kicked off by the Lighted Boat Parade, which is sponsored by Lola. And uh, the Fire Breathing Dragon was out there back uh, on the lake last year after a couple years of uh, COVID and was uh, out on a hiatus, but it's back healthy and it's gonna definitely be on the lake again this year. So uh, definitely thank you to the people that put that together and rescuing that boat. Uh, they know who they are and I appreciate them uh, bringing that back. So that Lighted Boat Parade was absolutely the biggest one I believe that ever. Yeah, and so this year I know uh, people saw it out there, and uh, by the I, I expect that we're going to have an, even more boats Friday night kicking off Dragon on the Lake Festival August 25th. All right. Well, the part of the festival that I take care of is I have the fun part of being the Dragon Boat uh, Race uh, Coordinator for the event. So that means I am the chief cat herder of, uh, of putting together the racing. Dragon Boat's authentic Chinese Dragon Boat races, racing a 250-meter course all the way from Park Island Bridge, racing right up to Greens Park. And in the park, all the teams. Uh, last year, we had 10 Dragon Boat teams uh, that were there. And we had about uh, 300 people in the park in Greens Park. In prior years, we've had up to 22 teams, and we're working to get back there. So our target this year, we're expecting to have 16 teams Put together as we're growing the event back up after a post COVID. So that, you can imagine that first year with COVID, and the people were, I don't know if I want to touch that paddle after you've been using it or whatever, but I think we're over that now. And uh, this year's event is going to be bigger and better than ever. So we're really looking forward to uh, uh, growing this year's back event, event back up. Uh, Lola, I have to say thank you very much to the Lola team especially Tom Patterson uh, and, and Jerry and Dino and uh, Mike, of course. <laughs> Mike, exactly. Uh, for uh, These are some just a few of the volunteers that are out there, the safety patrols during the event, during the Dragon Boat racing. You can imagine when we have these 20-foot long racing canoes out there on the lake, uh, the large waves are unaware uh, boaters could create a dangerous situation. So what we've done is we've, we have worked with the DNR, we've applied for our permit, we do a no wake bay on Saturday and Sunday, the days of the racing of the event. And the Lola patrols are out there allowing the spectators to get close to the race course to see the people's, your friends, you mean, out there paddling, racing for that finish line and uh, at a safe distance and just kind of keeping the waters nice and calm, optimal racing conditions. And we've heard from uh, some of the Canadian teams that come from, um, you know, obviously different countries uh, that they think some of the Lake Orion water some of the, is one of the better courses 
just because of the depth of the water, uh, the clarity, cleanness of the water, no current, the way it runs uh, north to south, it's a great course. So if you haven't seen Dragon Boat Racing, you know, get on dragononthelake.com and check it out. We got some great videos. Put together a team. You don't need to know anything about it. I'll teach you the 101s of Dragon Boat Racing. And uh, we've got the most awesome Dragon Boat Stanley Cup trophy that you could ever, you could ever imagine. 80 pound hand carved uh, trophy. So if you put together your winning Dragon Boat team, you get to keep that in your living room uh, for, for one full year. So, uh, so it's a nice traveling trophy. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanna say um, last year, we also did one thing with the high schoolers. We did, we were working on this for a long time and we're working to grow this even more this, this year. On Saturday afternoon, we had high school teams where we got work to get some sponsorship and actually allow uh, pull together high school teams. So last year was the first time ever we had Lake Orion fo football, uh, Rochester, and I um, um, had one more, Stony Creek. And we had the three high school teams. And I tell you, it was really something magical to watch uh, those high school competitive football teams come together. And, uh, you know, they're, they're warriors on the field, but they're friends in Greens Park here. And it was really something. And before they even got the water, they're saying, we're coming back next year. So we're working to, uh, you know, invite uh, Oxford and Clarkston. And anybody hearing me tonight, if you have coaches, we're really trying to open it up to really any type of high school teams, boys or girls or whatever. So uh, please reach out to dragononthelake.com and we'll get, we'll answer your call on that. So that's an exciting part that's going to grow this year that, that on Saturday. Um, well, we couldn't do it all without volunteers. And, uh, you know, Lola, with their group of volunteers on Saturday and Sunday with the safety boats, it's... Uh, I, to me, it's, it's awesome, you know, you've seen, you know, donating your time to your community on a fun event. You got a great view. So if you're a boat owner on the lake, you know, we, we're looking for uh, people to, with uh, Lola. We'll teach you the one-on-ones, but we actually be a safety patrol out on the lake, um, on the, in the bay there. And uh, um, you get the honor of, look, we need volunteers both Saturday and Sunday, and we do a morning shift and an afternoon shift. So you're not out there all day. You get to work in the morning or afternoon and then go enjoy the event the rest of the day. And we're working on this year, uh, uh, we're working with our volunteers. I got a little benefit for you. Uh, you get free admission to the Dragon Pub tent uh, for volunteering the, of the event of the Dragon Pub. So, <laughs> all right, so that's... So that's uh, one. That's probably one more beer you don't have to spend for admission, but you could have when you get to the Dragon Pub, the best Dragon Festival uh, there. So don't miss the Dragon Pub. That's the highlight. Um, any questions? All I can answer about Dragon on the Lake. Yes, sir. Who would we contact if we want to volunteer? Great question. Well, we do have a sign-up sheet already tonight. So if you if you want to volunteer, um, you know contact uh, anybody at Lola or uh, DragononLake.com. You, uh, you can get on the website. Please call the Orient Art Center. Um, that would be a great way. And and it's not only just for uh, the safety patrol, but we're also do. It's a great opportunity for the high school students to come and earn their hours, contribute to the community, uh, the largest uh, festival in Lake Orion, and we have literally hundreds of jobs, and there's, um, that we really appreciate everybody, all the volunteers. So, and we work with the uh, Rotary and uh, General Federations of Women's Club, uh, Knights of Columbus, and it's just great to see so many volunteers come together. So, any other questions? All right, well, we'll see you August 25th, 26th, and 27th. So thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Rob. Steve Hansen from uh, PLM Lake Management is next. So for those of you that might not know, um, PLM is the company that does the weed control. Um, so we've got the SAD. They do the entire lake. Um, Steve's going to answer, talk a little bit about what, uh, what he does or what they do. And I guess if we have any questions about that, you can answer. Okay. Good.
Good. Thank you. Um, you guys are really lucky. I work on hundreds of lakes and have over the last 22 years in Michigan. And to have a township supervisor like Chris that's so involved with the lake, to have the staff at the township, uh, Julie, that we work with that helps us do all of our things from our mailing list and everything, in the board that you have for Lola, um, we were working on the lake doing individual treatments uh, prior to the special assessment district. And I'll tell you what, George, I used to work with George Hanley, if you all know him, going around trying to collect money from, from people, and it, it was a mess. So it took a lot of work to get the special assessment district established, and it's been a great thing. Um, was it last year when we did the renewal? renewal? I ended up taking some of the data that we collected, and like Mike was talking about, the water quality data. I don't know if any of you have seen this. Um, I'm going to leave some copies on the table out there in case anyone wants it. But we also do nutrient monitoring, phosphorus. We do the water clarity sampling like Mike does. And they kind of build on each other. So we've got two sets of data. Um, ours is part of the, the management program that we have for the lake. Um, and one of the things that people were concerned about doing the lake management was that if you do any Google research on lake management, you'll see that it would turn the lake into a, a cesspool, that the water quality would go down, the clarity would go down, and all the stuff that you can read online. Um, so it was important for us to collect this data. And you know, since 2015, I added uh, last year's data that wasn't in the, the stuff for the renewal. But just to show you, and just in general, you can look at these, they're pretty self-explanatory, that the phosphorus levels in Lake Orion, our lab only goes down to, to 10 micrograms per liter. Anything below that, it just gets recorded as less than 10. And pretty much every fall sample is less than 10, which is pretty outstanding. Um, spring is a little more um, unreliable because you can get a big rain event that can bring things in. But the highest level we recorded was 13 micrograms per liter. So as far as that goes, Lake Orion, it, it's kind of unique because a lot of lakes in the area have much higher nutrient levels. Um, and the water clarity is fabulous. Um, again, for a lake that has a development on it, that Oregon does, the water clarity, uh, the diversity of native plants, the fish community, everything is really good, and we'd like to keep it that way. And this also, uh, I highlighted, you know, some things about the aquatic plant community with, you know, the native species number to make sure that we're not eliminating a bunch of native species, that we're controlling the species that we want to, and that, that things are stable, and they are. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is thank you for being patient we had about three weeks of brutal sun and heat that I know that the algae um, was growing, the weeds were growing, and we're on a pretty strict schedule here with treatments. Um, we send those out every spring. You should get the notice that says that the, the weeks that will be here. Um, but it was tough. I know that people uh, put up with some extra algae and weed growth in the areas, and I only received one really negative call and I won't tell you about it in case that person is here tonight, but uh, it wasn't very pleasant. And, uh, but again, uh, for all of the homes and all the people on the lake, for me to only get one call when I know that things were probably not great waiting for this next treatment. By the way, we're going to be here next Monday to do the treatment. Again, we'll go around the, the shoreline. Everyone will get posted. Um, and you should see a, a big improvement before we get into the fourth weekend. So with that, that's... All I really wanted to say, if people have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I don't want to take too much time, though. Just one quick question. How close to the shoreline can we go because of these breaks? As close as we can. There are some restrictions. It's getting to the end of some of the spawning habitat. We do have to avoid fish beds in some areas. So if they're up against the seawall, sometimes we'll, we'll stay out. But we try to get right up to shore, up to the seawall, so as close as we can. Thank you. Yep. You know, what is Monday anyways? I'm sorry, I don't know. Someone else mentioned that. What is the... 17th. Oh, uh, yeah. See, I had... Uh, we, our schedule here, not only do we send it out to all the 900 people on the lake, they're expecting us on that day. I also have fisheries notifications that I have to coordinate the treatments with the, the fisheries um, person in the area, and that was already set up for Monday. 
Um, so yeah, I really, I'm hoping that we have a day like today where there's not many people on the, the water. If it stays cool and cloudy, we usually uh, don't bother as many people, but you know, it's inevitable. We ruin, we ruin someone's summer, you know, every day we're out spraying somewhere. So, and just so you know, this is um, the swimming restrictions that we post on the posting signs, that's a requirement by the state. Um, the actual labels for the products we use do not have any swimming restrictions, any water use, any of your pets being in it, anything like that. So just if there's a little comfort in that, the state makes us post a 24-hour swim restriction on any herbicide treatment we do, uh, but the products we use don't have them on the label. Um, in the ir irrigation restrictions that are posted to are at the maximum concentrations, and we're at about half of that. So. Take that as you will. So I know that causes some issues. People see the sign, so, okay. Question. Yep. Um, you guys post all around the lake when you do the PLM, right? Yeah. You do the weed control. Is there any way that we could mark it on the back of your sheet for Lola? I don't know that anyone would see them. Because they either get attached to the trees they're posted all, the, in my neighborhood they're all in the yards and everybody yeah, goes out on, and gets them and the reads them. Are <clears throat> well that's true if you're you're posting it to a tree you it's might possible not back i'd almost rather send something out because we send the notice we're legally we send the notice to everybody on the lake with the treatment schedule and the products that we could apply i'd almost rather include something with that in fact i was thinking when you were talking about the boat things even a reminder because we used to do it as a newsletter i think we would put the notice in the newsletter. We could say something about, you know, did you know that if you're having people, you, you know, use your dock, if you're running your dock, it's a, a leak. You know, there's some informational stuff that we could include with the posting that we have to do. If it costs more, we might. Well, no, I'm just looking for marketing ideas because I know I got a lot of new neighbors. I've been out talking to them, and they didn't have clue that Lowell even existed. So. Yeah, and we, we could, I, I would say, posting signs might not be a great idea because most people probably just go out and, Throw them away, anyways. But uh, with the notices we send out, maybe we can work something out to do that because they go to everybody. So, okay, yep. I don't really have a uh, question per se, but I just have to say, after living on the lake here for over thirty years, um, you guys are doing a fantastic job because it was headed in the wrong direction. We wrapped around props and, and we just general nastiness, but you guys are really good. And I uh, just want to say they did a great job, and uh, I'm really impressed with the, with the treatment. Thank you. It's hard to please everybody, and I know that we don't, but uh, we do our best. So. Yep. Well, what's funny, what the state requires is that we post within 100 feet of where we treat, which isn't very far. It's like from here to the front doors of the building. So we could treat here and you could swim there. Um, is that product going to dissipate? Of course it is. Um, so I, I, of course it could be a lot lower concentration, but even at the maximum labeled concentration, which the, our state usually has a lower um, maximum amount, there's no swimming restriction on the label. Just telling you that information. So people don't panic. If they don't see the sign, they go in the water. You know, sometimes people will panic, so maybe they'll give a little peace. Did you have a question? I did. I'm not sure if you would know the answer. Occasionally we see that, that foam that's yep. nasty looking. What, what is that? Do you know? Is it actually like a white? So that's pretty common in lakes. In fact, when I, I lived up in the Traverse City area, and I would see it on lakes up there. So it's not a necessarily a water quality issue. It's attributed to proteins mostly in the water. Um, we've got, the DNR has posted some information about you know, foam on lakes. Uh, generally, it's just a natural uh, phenomenon. It comes from, from proteins and things that are in the water that get stirred up on a windy day with, with stuff. And it, it's not necessarily people think it's laundry soap or things like that. And it, I suppose it could be, but most of the time it's just a natural thing that happens on the lake. Something like a fish die off, is that something your company is allowed to take a look at or have concerns with? 
Yeah, I mean, we deal with those. We have to report them. My background is in fisheries, so I usually, of course, you know, you got, I hear about things first or it gets posted on next door that, you know, we treated and killed all the fish in the lake or something. Um, I think we've heard those before when the, the carp kill that happened a couple years ago, where it happened to be a virus that infected carp and only killed carp um, is what happened in the lake. And it could have been a lot worse than it was actually, but you know, things were posted that somehow we had something to do with it. But um, you know, we did report that when I heard about it and then the DNR fisheries came out and investigated it and things. But you know, definitely we're on lakes that we manage where we want to know that and uh, you know, we'll communicate that information to the state and work with them to you know, generally, you, it's not cut and dry. You can't always say what it is because it's an isolated thing. Mostly related to spawning stress, um, temperature changes, things like that that, that cause fish kills. So. Is that it? Okay, like I said, I'll leave some of these on the table and some other information. If you're interested, you can grab one. Thank you. Yeah, our next speaker is Donnie Steele. We're very fortunate to have her with us this evening. She's our, our representative out in Lansing. So, uh, Donnie, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, thanks everyone for having me here tonight. Actually, Jerry called me. Um, I met Jerry on the Safety Path Committee. Uh, he's a big community advocate, not only for Lola, but also with a township. And we were on the safety path committee about making sure that we have more safety paths. So expanding our path system and making sure that it's safe as well too. So I met Jerry a couple years ago, probably 10 or so. And um, uh, I just um, am thankful that you invited me. So thank you. And I am thankful for Lola. I think that I used to be on a homeowners association uh, in Oxford many, many years ago, and it's so important to have the community to be a partaking in the development and the taking care of the community, because without the residents and being a part of the whole system, I think sometimes it falls apart as a community. And one thing that I always hear is that Lake Orion, it's special because of the community, and I think that this is part of it. So I want to um, say good job, you guys. And I know um, I was at the township for basically 10 years and then two years on the safety path before that, so a total of 12 years. So it was really great working with Chris and he is a great supervisor and a great leader and I was happy to work with him for all those years. I mean, doing this building was uh, a great um, asset to the community because the community can use it and I, I don't know if you guys even know, you can rent the room next door and have baby showers and um, parties right there and is the Orion Center as well too. So um, that was my old job. Now my new job is in Lansing. I was elected in January um, and I am on my sixth month. It seems like a roller coaster. The ones that you just can't quite get off of and you're screaming because it keeps going downhill. <laughs> so I keep on screaming to let us uh, be heard and known. And I just want to make sure that our voice from Orion Township is, be excuse me, is being heard in Lansing. And I work at that every single day. Um, I just wanted to say that I was, uh, I grew up in Lake Orion. I went to Lake Orion High School. And um, so, it's my happy place, so being here tonight is happy. And um, I don't want to complain about Lansing, but Lansing isn't as happy as Lake Corian. So. <laughs> so you guys can complain about Lansing. I live there during the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Lake Orion is like a vacation compared to Lansing. It's not as pretty, let's just say. Um, anyways, I just wanted to say I was here 12 years, and the other, besides the township hall, one thing that we added as well was Camp Agawam. Have you guys been to Camp Agawam? That's a real jewel, and to be able to keep that green space. I'm all about the green space, a tree hugger. Um, I like the pass, and I also like the uh, appropriation side of government. So those are my two favorite parts, making sure that your money stays in your pocket and that if you are spending money, it should be on green space and protecting our 
resources like the lakes and the parks and the trails. So um, I just wanted to say that I was on the Transportation Committee, which is part of the appropriations. And um, one of the things that I have been really trying to do is be heard in the transportation was to make sure our roadways from our driveways to the highways, um, that they're being taken seriously and paying attention. And that to me, one of the government, that the government can do at the state level is take care of our roads and our schools, but our roads are really important. And um, I sat on, I sat on that committee along with the appropriations and I found that we need to be spending more money on roads and we're not. So, um, so while I was uh, in the budget committee meetings, I kept saying more money for local roads, more money for local roads, more money for local roads, and fix the road around GM. And we need a pocket li uh, lane going off of Baldwin Road. Um, they did some engineering work and it really helped being in local government to know that uh, we spent money here uh, with the engineer, for, uh, OHM is our engineer, they did a study um, in conjunction with Auburn Hills so that when you get off uh, I-75 and you want to go onto Brown Road, you have to go onto Baldwin and it gets all backed up. And so we did a study that you actually could do, get off I-75, go down this little pocket lane, and then get right onto Brown Road and never have to get onto Baldwin. So um, I have let everybody in Lansing know that we want that as well too. But um, right now, uh, I am a Republican, and we are in the minority. And I have found that unlike local government, where you sit at a board and you're in front of all your neighbors and friends that they could see you at the grocery store and on the lake, and they tell you what you, they think, in Lansing, it's a little bit more isolated. So what I've found is that um, it's very political and bipartisan. And you would hope that when you go there, it's all about taking care of the people making sure it's what's best for the people, but what I'm finding, it's about agendas and relationships and to try to build relationships on both sides of the aisle so um, that they will listen to you when you really have an issue that needs to be resolved, like in Lake Orion and that type of thing. So I'm continuing on making relationships. Everything is bipartisan and political, and I'm not used to, but I'm on this roller coaster, and I'm hanging on tight and screaming for Orion every day that I'm there, plus Bloomfield and Auburn Hills and Bloomfield Hills, but of course my heart is located here. I live in Orion. I live on Square Lake. It's, um, <laughs> so I sit on my peaceful deck and listen to all the noise on Lake Orion. Which I, so I hear your complaints here today about too many boats out there, and I can hear them on Sunday and Saturday as well, too, as I sit in my little peaceful lake on Square Lake. We just built a house there. Um, I lived on the golf course for uh, uh, many years, and then I wanted to get back on the lake, like, because I love it so much. I lived on Indian Wood Lake, then I went to live on Indian Wood Golf Course, and now I live on Square Lake, so I'm well. Uh, when you move from neighborhood to neighborhood, it's amazing how different it is, even though you're literally, I moved one mile, one mile. I've moved three miles in 20 years. So um, anyways, we have PLM do our lake as well too, I believe, yeah, they take care of our lake. And, um, and I bought a lot from one of um, your neighbors on Lake Orion, and he had his place of heaven on Lake Orion, and he didn't need the lot, so I bought it on Lake Orion. And I'm the little log cabin on the Pollyann Trail, so if you see that, that's where I live now, and just wave to me, because I'll be sitting on the porch listening to what's going on Lake Orion. Um, on a different note, I uh, do know that they had proposed to hire, I think it's 150 more um, full-time officials, full-time for Eagle and they wanted to do so to protect the waterways. waterways. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, I wasn't given more information, and we're still during, we're in the budget process, even though I'm on appropriations, I'm not a part of the budget process because I'm in the minority and I'm complaining a little bit, but I would, you would want me on your budget because I like to make sure that we account for everything and then there's good oversight and that we're having you know, re good oversight and accountability. Um, unfortunately, 
I, <laughs> totally, it's done in a closed room that even though I'm on appropriations, I have no say so in the budget. So um, I keep asking for our needs and, um, and I will continue to ask because I think that we need eyes, not being political, but Republican and Democrat, we need, we need um, equality in our government to where every voice is heard equally and that we have a balance of government. So that's just my little, little uh, political statement. And back to the budget part, I don't know where Eagle is with that full-time people, for the full-time um, 160 people, but it was to protect the waterways. I don't know if that would be overpowering for the lakes or if it would be helpful. I don't know. So um, I am, I will watch and see what it is there for. So uh, other than that, I didn't really have anything more to say. Jerry said, how can we get more money and how can we get better oversight? So he is working to make sure that there's less traffic on the waterways and how to get more um, money that might be able to be able to watch for the safety on the lake. And that's why I was supposed to be here is to do that. But it's, it's a group effort. I'll keep my eyes on Lansing, you keep it on the lake, and Chris will keep it in the township. And together we should be able to um, make our community even better. Yes, sir. It goes shy, uh, like 17 mile. So, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, low, yeah, Lone Pine. Yeah. Uh, Lone, it's Long Lake and Lone Pine. So Lone Pine, yeah, 17 mile. No, I don't. Yeah, a little bit, but it's like, I have a map of it, and you, it's, it's a little jiggy jaggy, but um, yeah, right around there. So all of Bloomfield Hills, and actually a little bit of Oakland Township as well too. But I'm finding what's different between local government and state government is the issues are bigger, the needs are greater, and there's more people to um, have to keep your eyes open for. You know, we do everything from schools to, well, you guys know, with the state government, Eagle, um, income tax, treasury, uh, license plate tabs, um, the laws, um, uh, election laws. I, yeah, so that's just... I could go on and on, but I don't want to bore you guys. So, anybody else has any questions for me? Yes, Jerry. Um, I've been seeing your newsletter, and I have to tell you, it's a great newsletter. It's very informative. It's got a lot of information. My question is, do all of your constituents get that newsletter, or is it party related? Um, I send out, actually, two newsletters. One, what they call, like, in-house. Those are people that have reached out to me, um, like, uh, I'm having a hard time getting unemployment, can you help me out? Now I have their email, now they get my newsletter from the state. And then I have my own pool of people that I've known forever and ever, that they get a second newsletter that's more like, more of my voice of whining and complaining with a little bit more strength. But the, So I don't know if you get, some people get two, you get two or one. Just one, and I'm. I would love to add people on my new. This is not my notes, but maybe on the way out, if you are not getting my newsletter, I would love to have you on the newsletter because I would love to keep you informed. Because there's things that I cannot do, and things that might really affect you. That um, no, let me say it this way. If there are things that you have questions on, I want you to reach out to me in my office and to see if I can help you. There's things that, laws that um, are going to come through that might affect you in your job or something. And sometimes I need your help to help me be a bigger voice in Lansing as well too. So I would love to be able to say, hey, they're putting these new election laws that are for our voting. They're gonna change some of our voting again for the third time. I could really use your help to have you push back if you don't like the way that this is going. I could use your help, and I would like to be able to help you at the same time. So, anybody else? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, you probably heard my question. I asked Chris about grant money. This is just a follow-up. <laughs> and uh, being around corporations, I'm, I'm sure you and your staff are out here lots of things, lot grant money. I didn't want to play a lot, lot grant money because I didn't want to take away from the district. But your staff will probably hear of things that are Many times 
Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll give it right to Chris because he'll just download it right to you guys, I think. And then, and then him and 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 Sam in his office is excellent. She's helped us out a lot in the township. So, yeah. Eighty billion. But who's counting? <laughs> Right. I've a great, great, I great. I will keep my eyes open because I do keep my eyes open every single day. So, anybody else? Oh, and I was out door knocking, so that's why I look not in a suit today. So, telling people all the great things we're doing in Lansing door to door. So, anyways, thanks. I, I, have, oh. I have a question or a comment. So, you heard the discussion around. Um, individuals renting dock space. And you heard some of the discussion around, you know, we've, we and, and individuals have reported that through the 1-800-POACH uh, line. The, we've gone through the right process. And what we've been told is that the state does not have the resources, the DNR, Eagle, whatever it is, does not have the resources to even investigate. Okay. So we've taken it upon ourselves to address both the village and the township to try and get some help. Um, when I said that we were not met with open arms, part of that discussion was we were told that the state laws would supersede anything that we would do on the village side or the township side. And then we were also told that the, that the state was trying to increase, um, you know, increase the usage. So I guess my question would be if, if we can't get the resources from the state and we've already got laws in the state, what can we do about that to try and get the resources to enforce what's already there? And maybe, maybe what we need to do is as we proceed with, because we're going to proceed with the village, and, and I'm not sure the township, what we'll do there, but, but the village for sure, we've already started that process. So perhaps what we want to do is as we go through that process, maybe we can either meet with you or keep you abreast of what's going on and maybe you can help us in that endeavor. Because if we, if we put something on the books in the village, but the state, the state supersedes right. that, then we've really done nothing. Right. Well, uh, you know what, um, Jerry asked his two concerns, and I did not um, look into it yet, but I will. I, he asked me a couple days ago, I just didn't look into it yet. But I will look into who it is there that deals with it, and who can I talk to. And what laws? I will. I will find that out, and I'll answer you that question. Yeah. One of the downsides, one of the downsides to some of the comments that were here tonight, they peep the uh, DNR push back and say, "You go get the MC numbers, and then we'll investigate." That's wrong. It's not our job to go and take those MC numbers down. I know some people have actually been threatened by property owners. They come down and they say, what are you doing and why are you doing it? And you have no right to do this. Therefore, we're not, we're not into the business of trying to meddle in personal affairs. We're in the business of trying to help people to have a safer lake. And by dealing with the overcrowding basically caused from private dock rentals, that's where we want to be. But we need the state to help us. We don't need them to tell us to do their job for them. And that's really frustrating. Uh, one thing on that, um, if, if you do see violators, track me down. Okay, because I work closely with Chris Nunn and others. Track me down, I'll, I'll investigate it with him or whoever it is, and we'll take care of it personally. Okay? You don't need to get the numbers yourself. Tell me where it is, and I will call it that way, and I'll call it that way. Believe me, that's music to our ears. Thank you, Bill.
I was just going to make a quick comment. More than 30 years ago, um, when I was new to the lake, I was uh, aggressively approached by the DNR. I had uh, three watercraft there, and uh, none of them were registered to the address of my lake property. One was a house in a, in a different city, and two of them were corporations in, a, in a, yet a different city, and they were insistent that I prove that I owned all of them. So they must have had some quick means of being able to get to the bottom of who owned it, and they didn't see or well, this was in 91 or 92. It seemed very easy for the DNR to do this. And like I said, they were very aggressive. I literally had to prove to them that I was the owner of all these. And it seems to have changed 25 years ago. I just, from my earlier comments, I, I really appreciate Jerry and the Lola board. I mean, it, it, I'm a dork. I watched the village meetings. I watched the council meetings and I'm actively involved in the community, right? And I've seen, you know, Jerry, you know, and team in front of the village and trying to get this in front of them. They've got big problems, as we all know, um, and, and continuing to fight things. And so I, I think the best thing that came out of this meeting for me was the fact that this is front and center for Lola. Um, you guys recognize it. You're, you're doing, you know, educational type things. And, and so... That's my walk away out of this meeting is to help spread it in the community that, you know, it's a small, small town, right? Word, word travels fast. And, and I think, Bill, if, if there's one house that we can get, we're not talking about a boat here, a boat there, right? There's several serious offenders out there that are paying their property taxes with renting five, six, seven, eight boats out there, right? And so... I think that's what we need is just to, to, to make an example of somebody and let it, you know, spread in the community that, you know, this is, this is something that, you know, we're taking seriously. So, um, again, I appreciate everything that Lola is doing, and, and that's my walk away out of this meeting is to spread the word that, that you guys are on it. Thank you, Donnie. Elections, I think, is it? We need uh, at least two volunteers. Besides me? So I know that this was the part of the meeting that you were really waiting for to volunteer your services to your lake association. And that volunteering comes in the form of serving in an office. Now, if you haven't got it yet, you'll get it here in a few minutes. It's the slate of officers that we put together for the 2023 season, in some cases, You'll be elected for two years, 23, 24, and 25, because we're halfway through. But I'd like to start from the top. And for our, our president, Dino Sararaki. Dino is here. He's been on the on our Lola board for many, many years. He's better known as the father of the sandbar. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'm going to open up nominations for anybody that would like to seek the office of president-elect. Not seeing any. I'm going to move on to secretary. And if you look at your ballot, we don't have a secretary right now. And we really, really do need a secretary. In the absence of a secretary, all of the rest of board members are going to take turns being the secretary. And that'll be by rotation at each meeting. Um, if the position doesn't get filled shortly thereafter, the president of the association will be able to make a nomination, and then that nomination will go before the board, and the board can either approve or reject it. So do I see any hands in the air to be a secretary? Does That's anybody else need... Um 
one of the sheets. All right. Um, moving on to treasure, Richard Benoit. Well, let me, let me put in. Let me put in a plug here. So, last year, they were looking for a president-elect. I was sitting in the back corner someplace, and my wife poked me, and she said, "Hey, raise your hand." <laughs> I raised my hand, and here I am. So. The, the kind of the, the message is we really need folks to get engaged. We really need folks to get involved. This is a great opportunity to raise your hand and, and get involved, get engaged in, a, in, a, in an organization that's trying to make the lake better. Okay? So I really, really plead with you to raise your hand and, and give, give, us, give us some help here. And if you don't feel comfortable raising your hand for an officer's position, or for a director's position, you can always help us with some committees. And we, we've got several committees, some that have been dormant for a few years, and that's because of lack of people power. Uh, so anyway, um, think about it, and uh, if there's a committee you think you might want to involve with, or you just want to volunteer to help the association, you can reach out to any of us, and we'll gladly bring you on board. Treasurer Richard Benoit, uh, Richard's done a heck of a job for us for several years, and uh, Richard is one of the long-term members with the association. Um, and is there anybody that would like to raise their hand to become treasurer? Not seeing any. I will move on to the two-year director's positions. Uh, Pat Bellinger. Pat Bellinger is a charter member of our Lake Association. He's been doing this, his job with the Lake Association for 43 years, okay? Anybody would like to put their name in for a two-year director? Well, after you get into the office, we'll unload. <laughs> but, but anyway... The best, way, the best thing I can recommend to anybody, get involved with, with our board meetings. Our board meetings are open. You can come in, you can feel, get the feel of what the, what the organization is all about on a first tier level, and then decide maybe next year you want to get involved kind of thing. Not to try and discourage anybody now from volunteering, but we do need help with committees. So I, please, just think about that. We're as strong as our membership, and we're as strong as our collective board. Okay, uh, Pat Bellinger, we're going to move on to Amy. Amy, I'm going to let you pronounce your last name because I don't. Nigalicia. Nigalicia. Everybody can pronounce it. Amy Allen. Okay. Anyway, Amy is new. She's a new volunteer to the board, and uh, her name is here for a two-year director position, and we're very, very happy to have Amy come on board with us. I'm not trying to make a pun with this on board stuff, but it seems to fit. Okay, does anybody want to uh, go against Amy? Not seeing any hands, we'll move on. Next two-year director, Mike Keller. Mike has been doing our water safety program for, excuse me, water quality program for several years now. He's been doing a great job. And he was talking tonight about putting his hand in 32 degree water. I think he'd need some help with that. Anybody want to put their name in for that two year position? Okay, not seeing anybody. I will move on to a one year director position. This is uh, filling in for a person that needed to step aside due to his job activities. And this person is Adam Killowell. Adam, can you stand up? Where'd you go? There he is. He's new to the board as well. We had a, a, a little get together in our bay about a year and a half ago, and we were at the campfire, and we were all drinking Kool-Aid, and uh, we started talking about the Lake Association, the board, and Adam says, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. So I reached out to him a few weeks ago, and he says, gosh, you got a good memory. <laughs> but anyway, we're happy to have Adam on as a new member as well. Would anybody like to submit their name for that one-year position? Okay, let's just talk about, on the bottom there, our standing directors and officers, our president. George was president-elect last year. He goes to become president this year. Uh, past president was, or past president was Chris. 
Chris, Chris was our president. He moves to past president. He gets the keys to the condo. Just kidding. Okay, standing one year is Tom Patterson. Tom's been with us for a very, very long time. And myself, another 43 veteran with the Lake Association. Not seeing any names. All of these ballots aren't needed. I will ask for a motion to accept the slate as presented. I'd, 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 like, to, I'd like to ask one more time on a secretary, though. We really, we really need, we need one more person. And we were very, very fortunate to get Adam and, and Amy. So, so, so that, that's a really good question. So, so, we, so we meet on a monthly basis. We have a monthly meeting. In the winter, things kind of taper off. So that I'm going to say for two, three months in the winter, we, we re realistically don't meet. So we have a standing meeting of, of the board once a month. During times of a little bit, uh, I'm going to say, increased activity, so prior to our annual meeting, we had, I think, two meetings um, that, were, that were specific to making sure that we were ready for tonight. Um, for the, the lighted boat parade, um, we had several meetings last year that were specific to organizing that. So there's a little, little higher frequency. Uh, the meeting that we had with the village and the township um, I think that was in April, could have been early May. Um, there was some preparation for that meeting. We didn't, we didn't want to go in there unprepared. So we, you know, we, were, we made sure that we were prepared. That was a special meeting. Um, we've met a couple of times with Mo Sherry, um, talking to Mo Sherry specifically about Lola, you know, what, what we think the issues are and where we think they fit in, um, either plus or minus to those issues. So there, I'm going to say that the regular frequency is once a month. However, there are things that, that occur that, that where we get together. Um, we all can't make every meeting. We understand that. Um, we've tried, um, this year we tried using Zoom for, the, for folks that are perhaps out of town so they can call in and still participate. Um, a lot over email, too. Yeah, we, it, we do a lot over email and text, quite honestly. We, we, I'm going to say we, we, we stay in touch. I'm going to say almost on a daily basis by text. What's the duties? I'm sorry. The duties of the, so the duties of the secretary are really to to maintain records of our meeting. And and we've done a bad job at that. We really, I mean, some of us have attempted to to try and run a meeting and keep notes at a meeting, but you really you really need somebody that's not trying to run the meeting to do that. That's, that's really the duties of the secretary is to... And also it's a voting member, right? So any issues that we vote on, the secretary gets to vote. So yep. Really it's just capturing meeting minutes and, and you know, providing your opinion and voting on the meeting. One year. That's fine. We'll we'll take you on a committee. For sure. For secretary? Yeah. And your name? Yeah. We're gonna need your name, sir. Dan Nelson. Okay, thank you. I'll talk to you afterwards if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have a full slate. And we have nobody running for any of the open, not open positions, for positions that are available on our slate. I will look for a motion to accept the slate as submitted. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Don't say yes, honey. <laughs> so, all right, well, thank you, and welcome to our three newest members to the board. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we had we had the.
second to last item on the agenda was, was Q&A. I know we're going to get kicked out of here at 8.30. Um, anything real quick? Quite honestly, I'm, I don't believe, yeah, so, the, so the question was, um, is there anything going on with the state to try and reduce uh, the number of permits for marinas or not renew permits for marinas? And I, I think the answer to that question is that I, I think it's just the opposite. I think if you apply for a permit, pay your fees, and I, I think it's, I don't think there's anything yeah, I don't, I don't think the state recognizes the same overcrowding. Is that a fair statement? Okay. Yes, sir. In your discussions with Will Perry, did you mention that they could join MOLA and pay for each of the units that took place? And, and actually, we have. Yeah. We, we have. They, in fact, so they don't have any residents on the lake right now, but Mosheri has five um, paid memberships this year. And... Yeah, they are. Yeah. So, and so, and so beyond that, they have committed that for every apartment that they have rented, that they will pay the twenty dollars. They're good. They will pay the twenty dollars for that resident. But yes, they have. I think we're going to have to, yes. And I, I'll say, from from my opinion, and anybody can voice their own their different opinion, but the couple of meetings that we've had with Mosheri, my feeling is that they've they've tried to be good citizens. They've they've tried to to work with us. Did you meet with Dominic and Frank? Um, we met with both Dominic and Frank, and then Dominic Tringali, who was here earlier in the meeting. In the meeting, um, their engineer. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank Will uh, and Janelle for a very terrific and incredible performance. I think you're the village one who runs sewer pipes uh, right next to my property that gets the lake. And thank you for coming to meet us about two weeks into the lake into our uh, sewers house. Uh, if you were not here from anywhere in this village, you go to the bathroom or the toilet or lower the bathroom stall, the urinal or the kitchen bowl, and uh, you guys are able to move it off. Okay, um, so the only thing that I wanted to say um, coming up on being president this year, um, I'd just like to ask everybody, whatever you can do to get involved, to get engaged, um, I would ask you to do that. Um, I believe that, that Susan and Debbie were at the table at the front here. I hope that we got everybody's name and, and email address so that we can try and contact you. Um, please let us know if you want to be on a committee. Committees um, would include water quality, um, communication, membership anyway we could really use some, we could really use some help and and there they're going to be times to try and boost membership um, we may be going door to door we'll be looking for some help it, you know with 800 houses it's very difficult to uh, to do that without a lot of people so I would I would ask you to please make sure that we have your contact information um, so that we can we can get a hold of you
Okay, anything uh, before we wrap it up? Any opposed? Thank you.